Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's webinar on the Common Ground Taxonomy. Um, today we have um, three uh, distinguished guests for you, Dr. Marjun, um, the Chairman and President of HKGFA, and also Dr. Wang Bo Lu, who will, is a Senior Fellow at the Tsinghua University, and also Ms. Chowning Huang, who is the Vice President of HKGFA. And before we start, just a couple of housekeeping. Um, this webinar will be recorded and we will have Q&A immediately after Dr. Marjan's uh, presentation as he will leave early. Then we'll follow on with Dr. Wang Bolu's uh, presentation followed by Ms. Uh, Chowning Huang. So um, during the Q&A, please feel free to drop your questions in the chat. Um, and without much further ado, I will pass the floor to Dr. Marjan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jenny. Can you hear me okay? Good. Uh, well, first of all, on behalf of the uh, Hong Kong Green Finance Association, uh, let me welcome all of you for attending this uh, webinar uh, on Common Ground Taxonomy. And right after my uh, presentation on the origin and developments of the Common Ground Taxonomy, we have uh, Dr. Wang, uh, who will uh, tell you more about technical details of the uh, taxonomy, uh, as Dr. Wang was uh, one of the key persons in the uh, technical expert group for producing the common ground taxonomy. And then Chani will be presenting a uh, phase one report on how to apply the common ground taxonomy in Hong Kong and for GBA. So congratulations uh, to the completion of the phase one report, Chani and the team. Now, uh, let me kick off with uh, a, a short introductory presentation on the Common Ground Taxonomy uh, in the capacity as co-chair of the IPSF uh, Taxonomy Working Group. So uh, just give me 10 seconds, I'll upload my PowerPoint. Okay, I assume you can see this uh, clearly. Um, now, let me start by telling the audience on why we need a taxonomy. Um, I guess many of you have used taxonomy a lot, but some of you may be relatively new to this space. Uh, based on our experience of developing taxonomy uh, in China, uh, at least the four um, reasons why we need taxonomy. Number one, uh, it presents, uh, prevents greenwashing and provides a basis for labeling and verification of green financial products. Um, as early as in 2013, China had its first taxonomy, and in 2015, when I was in the PBOC, I led the drafting of the second taxonomy, that's the uh, Green Bond Taxonomy. And later on, we had a Green uh, Industry Taxonomy, which provides a basis for many uh, revisions of the uh, Chinese taxonomy. So throughout these uh, periods, we realized that without the official taxonomy, uh, there is a tendency for users to claim that they are doing green things, but actually uh, without a basis and that's uh, uh, the risk of greenwashing. So we need official and credible taxonomy um, so that the verifiers, third party opinion uh, providers can verify against the taxonomy on uh, products and activities that are consistent with the taxonomy. The second reason is uh, taxonomy can provide a basis for performance management and disclosure. Uh, again, using China experience, uh, the uh, banks were asked by the central bank to report the uh, environmental benefits of uh, their green loans and green bonds. Of course, the uh, banking regulator were asking the same thing from the banks. So how do they measure that? They measure these benefits within the boundary of green definition. Um, so those qualify the green loans and green bonds if they deliver environmental benefits and uh, uh, the total sum of these benefits, which could be in the form of number of tons of carbon emission reduction uh, will be reported as part of the green performance of the financial institutions. Of course, companies will need to do the same thing uh, to the financial institutions that provide the financing to them. And based on such measurement, the central bank and other regulators can allocate incentives. Uh, for example, currently the PBOC allocates low cost funding through the uh, decarbonization facility to the banking system and uh, through that to the uh, green projects. And local governments provide the subsidies and interest uh, uh, interest subsidies and guarantees to green projects, which are again based on the taxonomy. And uh, uh, that's essentially the, uh, the third point that I mentioned already, allocating incentive, which is based on measurement 
of performance, uh, which in turn is based on taxonomy. And finally, provide a basis for product development. Uh, for loans and bonds, it's relatively easy. Uh, you have definition of loans and bonds, that's a green, and then you develop these products. But if you want to develop a portfolio of green products, for example, a bond fund, then these bonds will have to be collected based on the taxonomy. Uh, and the uh, ABS, uh, which uh, may be based on underlying portfolio of green products, they should be uh, using the taxonomy as a basis as well. Uh, so all these are the uh, very typical usage uh, that's already happening in the mainland China. And I think it will be uh, uh, regarded as very useful uh, um, uh, sort of scenarios for usage in many other uh, markets and economies. Now, the problem back seven years ago when we began to uh, coordinate on green finance initiatives globally was the lack of taxonomy. I remember in 2016, uh, when I began to co-chair the G20 Green Finance Study Group, most of the countries were complaining uh, that they don't have a definition and therefore uh, was very difficult to develop products, measure performance, allocate incentives and so on. And now the situation has changed completely. Uh, we're facing a problem of too many taxonomies. I heard there are 200 taxonomies already. And if all of these taxonomies are defining green in different way, then we get into big trouble. Uh, mm, it could lead to market segmentation uh, because the one market's uh, um, definition of green is not recognized in the other markets, then the cross-border green capital flows would not be uh, possible. And secondly, it could increase transaction cost. For example, currently, if you want to issue a green bond that's sold in China and in Europe, uh, you need a um, you know, verification in both places. You have to do it twice. Um, and uh, thirdly, there is a risk of greenwashing. Just imagine if there are 200 definitions of green and someone may want to use the lowest definition, uh, lowest standard to label his green activity. Uh, that's the risk of greenwashing. So uh, we now realize all these are problems um, because of lack of coordination, uh, lack of consistency of taxonomies globally. And we need to do something uh, to address this uh, problem arising from a proliferation of taxonomy. So. In the G20, uh, under which I co-chair the uh, G20 System of Finance Working Group, we developed a roadmap of System of Finance uh, uh, last year. And uh, within the roadmap, uh, the number one action we proposed uh, was to enhance comparability, interoperability, and eventually consistency of alignment approach, including taxonomy. So clearly, this is a global consensus. We have to do something uh, <clears throat> to uh, the uh, proliferation of standards. And specifically under action one, uh, there are six principles. And if all of the uh, jurisdictions are following these principles and develop their taxonomy, these taxonomy will look quite similar. Uh, that's, that would be a good thing. And the two most important principles are number one and number two. The first one is saying um, for any activities, including your taxonomy, you wanna make sure it has a positive contribution to some SDGs. Now, you know, one of the 17, sustainable development goals. Um, it could be either you know, emission reduction, it could be protecting biodiversity, it could be a circular economy and so on. And secondly, uh, you want to avoid negative contribution to any of the SDGs. Uh, that's essentially the do no significant harm principle. So combine these two, uh, just to make it simple, any activity included in your taxonomy needs to do something good to SDC, uh, to, to, to one of these SDGs, but not doing anything bad uh, to any of the uh, SDGs. Now, going on to the uh, second action under the uh, G20 roadmap, uh, where we proposed uh, some more specific uh, initiatives on uh, promoting the uh, consistency and eventually harmonization of taxonomies. Now, one is uh, uh, the recommendation of uh, for jurisdictions to use the same language to develop the taxonomy. By language, we really mean the uh, industrial classification. And that's exactly what the common ground taxonomy has been doing. The common ground taxonomy use ISIC, that's International Standard Industrial Classification uh, to classify the Chinese activities and the European activities. And therefore, these two taxonomies could be compared. And in the future, we hope our new taxonomies will go straight to ISIC. Uh, rather than uh, using a, uh, you know, uh, their, their, their own uh, classification methodology, which is not compatible with others. 
The second recommendation is a voluntary use of reference of common taxonomy. And uh, uh, of course, now there is a common ground taxonomy which could be used by other jurisdictions that have not developed a taxonomy, um, but they could use this common ground as a reference or as a building block. And finally, we are promoting regional uh, collaboration on taxonomy. For example, in Africa, we probably don't need uh, you know, 50 countries each developing their own taxonomy. Rather, uh, I'm uh, hoping to see there's one taxonomy that covers the entire African uh, continent so that uh, uh, the green market can be integrated with better liquidity. Um, well, the IPSF work is uh, uh, really a actual implementation of the uh, G20 principles and recommendations. Um, back uh, in 2019, Europe, China, and a dozen other countries' jurisdictions launched this international platform for uh, system of finance. And uh, under that IPSF, um, China and Europe um, launched a working group on taxonomy. That was launched in July 2020. And uh, I was appointed as the uh, co-chair uh, on the China side and on the European side as Marcel Hug from uh, BG FISMA. And uh, the job of this taxonomy working group is to develop a common ground taxonomy that can be recognized both by China and Europe. So it will show uh, as an example of how a common taxonomy can promote cross-border green capital flows, especially between China and Europe. These are two largest green finance markets, but it could have many other usage as well. And what we did uh, in the past two years under the, uh, uh, taxonomy working group, as well as the uh, expert group, which uh, has worked uh, extensively for the working group, is uh, um, to develop this uh, common ground taxonomy based on EU and China taxonomy. And uh, uh, part of that job is to convert the China European taxonomy into the same language, name the same classification. And uh, in November last year, uh, we produced the first version of the common ground taxonomy, which included 55 mitigation activities. And in early this month, we produced a second version of the common ground taxonomy, which now includes 72 activities that are both recognized by China EU under the uh, mitigation category. Um, just to show you quickly the uh, methodology that's used by the common ground taxonomy, uh, we start with European um, taxonomy, the Climate Delegated Act. As you know, the European taxonomy have many acts, and this is one which has been approved by the parliament. Uh, that's why we use that. Uh, it covers the climate-related activities. The other activities, such as uh, uh, environmental protection, uh, biodiversity uh, protection, and circular economy are yet to be approved, so that's not included in the current version. The second step is to take the economic mitigation activity from the Chinese taxonomy, namely the China Green Bond Taxonomy. And third step is to convert these two uh, China and European activities into the same, uh, what we call the uh, neutral code, namely ISIC, so that they can be compared. And the fourth step is to identify and select the common activities that are recognized by, uh, by both EU and China taxonomy. Um, this uh, selection and uh, identification is a very complex process. I think uh, Bolo is going to explain uh, later. There are, are six different scenarios under which the uh, selection and the uh, identification uh, is, is somewhat different. So I won't get into the details for the moment. And here is uh, the uh, snapshot of the table of contents of the common ground taxonomy. Uh, you can see it's broken down into sectors agriculture, manufacturing, uh, power, and uh, uh, you know, transportation, buildings, and so on. And uh, this is a comparison between the first and second version in terms of number of activities. Uh, you can see 17 new activities were added under the manufacturing category, and one new activity was added under the construction. In the old um, 2021, common ground taxonomy, uh, the main activities covered were uh, activities such as wind uh, power, solar power, biomass, storage of uh, uh, power, sewage treatment, uh, recycling of wastes, uh, renovation of old buildings, low carbon transportation, uh, and uh, uh, that includes road transportation, water transportation, and air transportation. 
And here are uh, a couple of uh, sort of more detailed descriptions on wind power and on uh, uh, road transportation. I won't get into the detail. That's just show you how it looks like. And uh, in the new version, uh, we added 17 manufacturing activities, uh, which include things like uh, uh, production of uh, smart grids, products and equipment, um, fuel cell equipment, and uh, uh, components of uh, new energy vehicles, and many other things. And uh, uh, the most interesting new addition is actually the new buildings. In the first version, we were unable to come to a conclusion uh, between the China and the European team as uh, the uh, description of green building in Europe is so complex and they were written in very, very different ways compared with the China uh, uh, definition. And uh, this time we um, formed a special group just focusing on this one item of new building. Um, and uh, after a few months of work, fairly intensive work, they came up with this uh, uh, common ground, uh, which is uh, um, in Chinese, I think they call the Jingling Paifang Jian Zhu. Um, and that's sort of net zero building, um, which is not the uh, traditional green building definition. Uh, the old good green building definition uh, were a little too low in terms of standards. And this time we are including uh, those green buildings that are close to net zero, but not 100% uh, uh, net zero. And uh, these are recognized both by the, uh, the Chinese and the European standards now. Uh, here are some of the new activities in the manufacturing space. I won't get into the details. Now, let me just say a few words on the usage of the common ground taxonomy. The first usage is uh, uh, providing a tool for comparing different taxonomy. We're now using this taxonomy, uh, this methodology to compare only two taxonomies of China and Europe, but it could be used to compare any other taxonomies as long as it can convert into the same language and also the selection of common grounds or common activities uh, through a, a fairly complex process of dividing them into different scenarios. I think these methodologies are very useful uh, in comparison and development of new versions of common ground taxonomy. The second usage, which is probably most interesting to uh, all audience here, um, your work on uh, markets and, and products, is that uh, the common ground taxonomy can be used by uh, market participants for developing and labeling green financial products. In the past couple of months, we have seen already four um, cases for that usage. For example, China Construction Bank and China Industrial Bank, Bank of China, have issued international bonds, uh, green bonds, and labeled against the common ground taxonomy. And very recently, Deutsche Bank China uh, labeled its uh, domestic green loans uh, lending to a uh, renewable power company in China uh, using the common ground taxonomy. Now, these are the existing usage, but I think there could, uh, could be broader usage. And uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, number one, it's uh, what's being done already. If China issues new green bonds internationally, I would encourage uh, the issuer and underwriters to use common ground taxonomy. Uh, <clears throat> as it's recognized very easily uh, by both China and, and Europe and uh, most of the global investors. And secondly, uh, European issuers, if they want to issue green bonds in China in the pendant bond market, they can also use common ground taxonomy. And uh, uh, the central bank said to me that they have resolved this uh, issue of converting the proceeds, which is in RMB into foreign currency, uh, if the uh, common ground taxonomy is used uh, to facilitate the uh, Panda green bond issuance in China. And also uh, the common ground taxonomy can be used to uh, package um, green financial products. So not just a standalone green bond, but uh, if you want to issue a bond fund, you want to issue ABS with underlying assets being a portfolio of green uh, activities, then uh, you can also use common ground taxonomy to select these underlying assets. Um, and uh, one more usage, which I discussed with uh, um, China-based financial institutions recently, is that uh, you can actually label the uh, green bonds issued in domestic China market using common ground taxonomy. Why? Uh, because the Chinese green bond market, in fact, is open to international investors through Bond Connect and through QFI. And the only reason uh, many international investors are not uh, really investing in domestic green bonds in China 
or not necessarily the only reason, the main reason is that they don't recognize it uh, because the domestic green bond taxonomy uh, is not automatically recognized by international investors. So if a domestic green bonds can have two labels, one is a China green bond label, the second one is common green common ground taxonomy label, then it's immediately available uh, to international investors through Bond Connect and through the uh, QFI uh, mechanism. So I think uh, in the future, we should encourage our uh, verifiers um, and labeling service providers to begin to do this, not only on the new issuance in China, but also on existing or the stock of green bonds in China. And uh, that will pave the way for um, a, a opening of the Chinese domestic green bond market to international investors. Um, here are a couple of examples which I mentioned already. As I said, the construction bank, China Industrial Bank, Bank of China have issued the international green bonds using common ground taxonomy and Deutsche China uh, used the common ground taxonomy to label its uh, 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 trade finance product. Uh, the interesting reason Deutsche was telling me why this uh, client want uh, a common ground taxonomy to label its domestic loan is that the client uh, wants to be recognized internationally. And in the future, there might be opportunity for them to um, raise uh, uh, funds internationally. So they begin to sort of uh, uh, exercise on how to uh, classify activity that's uh, recognized by uh, the uh, common ground taxonomy. The other usage is uh, for uh, other developing uh, other jurisdictions that are developing taxonomy to use as a reference. And in fact, Sri Lanka is a, a good example. Back, uh, uh, I think one or two months ago, Sri Lanka launched its uh, green finance taxonomy and they explicitly said that the common ground taxonomy was a ma major reference of building block of their taxonomy. And we understand that uh, Hong Kong uh, wants to do so as well as uh, uh, said by uh, Eddie um, last year during our GFA conference. And uh, I think uh, we, uh, namely market participants, um, including the uh, GFA working group, uh, should do something uh, to um, work with the authority to develop uh, a Hong Kong version of comma, Hong Kong version of taxonomy using common ground taxonomy as a main building block. And finally, um, the common ground taxonomy can provide uh, the possibility of uh, eventual harmonization of a global taxonomy. Um, as uh, I can imagine, I think globally, we probably would need to develop a building block approach to uh, taxonomy development, which means that uh, there's one common building block, uh, which most of the taxonomy will use. And uh, on top of that, each jurisdiction can uh, build a national building block that's consistent with the local uh, priorities. And if this core building block is a common ground taxonomy, then the common ground taxonomy will make a big contribution to the enhancement of comparability, interoperability, and eventually harmonization of global taxonomy, and thereby contributing to uh, better and more efficient uh, green capital flows uh, across jurisdictions. Uh, that was the Sri Lanka taxonomy I mentioned, and IPSF common ground taxonomy was uh, was in, in their building blocks. And uh, here are the 20 organizations which give IPSF uh, working group uh, feedback on the first version and uh, largely uh, these are reflected in the second version already. In terms of what the uh, taxonomy working group uh, and the uh, expert group will do in the future, um, I think uh, the following uh, few directions. One is uh, the uh, Common Ground Taxonomy Working Group will cover more environmental objectives going forward. So not only the mitigation activity, which we are seeing today, but also in the future, we should uh, cover environment, circular economy, and biodiversity as uh, Europe uh, is approving additional acts. And secondly, uh, we want to include more taxonomy in the comparison as a basis for the uh, Common Ground Taxonomy. Um, we are currently hearing uh, interest from UK and from Singapore of potentially joining uh, this uh, uh, sort of basis for comparison. And finally, uh, promoting global interoperability. Uh, partly, uh, we can do that through the improvement of the methodology, expanding the basis for comparison, and partly we should do that through capacity building. 
by disseminating the knowledge generated from the uh, taxonomy working group and expert group to more jurisdictions so that uh, they can be aware of the benefits of using uh, common ground taxonomy as a building block. So uh, let me stop here and uh, I give the floor back to Chowney. If we have a few minutes, I can answer a couple of questions from the audience. Great. Um, Dr. Marjorie, thank you for the very comprehensive overview. We do have a couple of questions um, from the audience. The first is, how is the do no significant harm principle embodied in the common ground taxonomy? Uh, now, so far, do no significant harm are not explicitly in the uh, common ground taxonomy, uh, but they are followed separately by the European taxonomy and the Chinese taxonomy. So what I'm recommending, uh, the way you use a common ground taxonomy is that uh, you use a common ground taxonomy as a way of finding activities that's consistent with the, uh, uh, the list. Um, but at the same time, uh, you may want to reference another principle, for example, Greenbaum principle or other principles uh, so that you can cover other um, sort of safeguard measures uh, under the other principles. Great. Um, and then just another question in terms of the application trend of the common ground taxonomy in the private market. Which types of scenarios do the activities most frequently fall into? And I guess the second part of the question is how about the US? Will we see the US joining the common ground taxonomy anytime soon as well? <laughs> uh, the application chain, I guess, is a question of the usage. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it could serve as a reference for taxonomy development serve as uh, the labeling tool for products and uh, uh, serving as a, a sort of building block um, for our future uh, interoperability and so on. Now, in terms of US uh, joining, I think the first thing uh, we need is US joining the uh, International Platform for Sustainable Finance. Uh, as uh, so far, um, it's uh, this IPSF community that's producing the uh, Common Ground Taxonomy. And uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a couple of members of the IPSF are already showing interest in joining uh, this comparison and becoming possibly the next you know, basis for common ground taxonomy. So we actually you know, welcome more countries joining uh, the IPSF, including the US. Great, thank you. I think that's all that we have time for. The other questions I think um, will be answered through the other panelists in terms of the status of using CGT in Hong Kong. Um, etc. So thank you so much, Dr. Marjan, um, and we'll let you um, move on. And then Dr. Wang, please, um, uh, you know, proceed with your presentation. Thank you. Can I be heard clearly? Yes. Well, thank you very much. It's um, I would say it's a great pleasure to have worked uh, and have the opportunity to work with Dr. Marjan on a common ground taxonomy. And as Dr. Madrin mentioned that um, and centered on, around the common ground taxonomy, I saw there are some questions. And as Dr. Madrin mentioned that, um, well, not until I was invited to join a team to develop the Sri Lanka taxonomy based on the common ground taxonomy, did I realize that there are knowledges that are generated in the process uh, but they're not fully captured in the instruction report, FAQ, and the table list that we have shared online. So I think it's worth um, uh, making the summary and trying to um, explain, to share with the audience some of the knowledge is during the process. So today, what I'm going to talk about is the common ground taxonomy, technical highlights, usability, and inspiration, and hopefully, um, some of the uh, slides, the contents will be able to answer the questions that were proposed by the audience just now. Um, the sharing for today, I will share some technical highlights about our methodology and then um, some technical insights about usability of the common ground taxonomy and then some inspiration for jurisdictions and financial institutions. So I, this is the path we came. The reason I wanted to share the path we came is um, this is a proof that the common ground taxonomy is the first 
and the most uh, comprehensive analysis comparison and of the work that try to produce and identify the overlap between the two jurisdictional taxonomies. And we had 12 um, technical group meetings between the European experts and China experts. And we had five working group meetings have explained to the members of IPS, uh, IPS members and um, also the observers and mostly MGBs. Um, so I think for people, I think, I hope that this will uh, prove that by using the common ground taxonomy, it will enhance the credibility and confidence of investors who invested in financial products that are linked to the, uh, or referred to the common ground taxonomy. So let me explain. Uh, I see that some of the publications in the market that they, the, um, there might be, uh, they said that there might be some other code or nomenclature that could be used. So here, let me explain why application of ISIC is in. And here are some background. Um, so the international standard industry classification of all economic activity, abbreviated as ISIC, is the international reference classification of productive activities and maintained by the United Nations. A majority of countries around the world have used ISIC as their national activity classification or derived from ISIC. And the NACI, which is the code used by the EU taxonomy is derived from ISIC. And the, for China, the industry classification for national economic activities is also derived from the UN ISIC uh, version four and with additional details at lower levels. Um, so for our group, I think uh, it took us about a half year to, um, to decide on or design this methodology. And we decided that in order to level the ground of comparison and alignment exercise, and the tech will disaggregate and reclassify the relevant project activities referring to the ISIC, especially for China taxonomy. Um, I don't know how many of the audience have read about, have read the ta China taxonomy, and it is not, um, it, it does, the current version does not use the um, ICEA, uh, the industry classification codes of China. What we have done is we first tried to map the China's taxonomy to the ASEAN code in China. And then, then I tried to do some uh, map uh, between the ASEAN and the ISIC, which is much easier. And it took us about three months to complete the mapping work. Uh, from the China's project taxonomy to the ISIC mapping. And also because both NASIAN and, uh, NACI and ASEAN are highly aligned with ISIC, it is expected that the high level sectors with overlapped project activities will be identified more easily, which work has been proved to be true. And this methodology or this framework, um, we tested it, the, the outcome, the first outcome, we tested on the energy sectors and which produced um, the outcome was 80% overlap between the EU taxonomy and China taxonomy. So then we decided to go forward in this methodology starting from the uh, February of 2021. Um, let me go to the next slide. So there are some, some benefits of using ISIC as reference nomenclature. ISIC is a useful tool which allows tech to classify industries based on the primary productive activities carried out. It allows tech to align and present the activities under the same industry classification and coding framework. It enables the jurisdictions around the world to communicate green actions by using the same language and therefore enhance comparability, interoperability, and consistency. As Dr. Ma said, it is a neutral code maintained by the United Nations Statistical Division, ensuring equality in geographic and the sector coverage, stable and could be updated per global needs. It is a scientific nomenclature that are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive with unambiguous scope 
in defining its four-level industrial activity compared to other codes maintained by commercial data providers. I noticed that for commonly used financial data providers, they use words or terms like consumer goods, food, food and agriculture, and then technology and the retail. And, and it's, you can notice that this, um, there are overlaps between them. And, and it's, it, it, it sometimes causes confusions. So this, will, uh, this kind of code will avoid a speculative behavior. And also it has instructions on how to identify the principal activity of a unit or entity using the top-down method enhancing the usability. I know this question of how to classify or map the activity or project to the taxonomy is a remaining question for the capital market participants. I think the IC to some extent can provide already provided a solution to this mapping. An objective and sector focus. I received questions from market players that ask why the common ground taxonomy only focuses on climate change mitigation. And Dr. Ma has explained and emphasized here again that the current common ground taxonomy serves the climate change mitigation objectives because the only climate dedicated act has been published by European Union and the climate change response covered by China's taxonomy is primarily mitigation project supporting China's decarbonization policy. We prioritize six impactful sections based on first, the, their contribution to the GHG emission in both the European market and the China's market. And second is their relevance to the bond market. How about their size in the existing bond market? So you can see here, we choose the six, they are called sections in I6 standard, and they're below them, there are divisions and descriptions. We have spent a lot of energy and try to classify and mapping all the, the selected so we selected climate change mitigation activities from the China taxonomy. There are 80-ish. And then we try to map it towards the divisions and based on some um, more granular level description in the ISIC. We can see here that we have the bar, the chart is how um, the China, the activities from the EU taxonomy and China taxonomy covers the, six, the divisions under the six sections. And here you can see that, um, let me explain the six overlap scenarios because I know in the FAQ and the instruction report, there's some two narratives. Um, some people feel confused, but here I hope I can make it easier for you to understand. Um, for the scenario one, so we give nicknames, so when we work internally, we do give nicknames to the scenarios. Um, so for the scenario one, it's low hanging fruit, which means that the China's activity, China's projects and the EU activities 100% overlap. And the scenario two, we, we call it follow EU, is because, and based on the uh, graph I, 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 I draw here is, the China scope of project has, is broader uh, than the EU scope, but they have it, it completely covered the EU scope. So we follow EU standard because it's more stringent or narrower. And then we have, we have scenario three, the EU um, activity completely covers uh, the China project, but it's broader. So we follow China. And then there are the fourth scenario is, um, we can sort of, it's called aligned similarity internally. And we can, you can see that um, for some activities of China and EU, they're going towards the same direction. Um, we, it, we, we know that there are overlaps. Um, and for the um, projects that we, uh, we, we tried our best, it's like a slice of cake, and then we try to slice the piece, the overlap piece out and describe it in the common ground taxonomy. And there are also some um, scenario five, we call it little or unclear overlap. The example I gave here is a pipeline or a trans, trans, like energy transmission 
um, pipelines. So in, in China, um, we have the uh, natural gas pipeline construction. Um, and for EU, there are projects that allows transmission of the hydrogen. Um, but there hasn't been standard, you know, um, you know, global standard to to tell for you verify or identify whether this pipe in China, you know, you say the pipe can be repurposed. Um, from transmitting uh, natural gas to transmitting hydrogen in the future, um, but it's it's not clear when it will start, and and there is no standard uh, to verify this. So we put, we think that there a minimum overlap, but we excluded this from the common ground taxonomy. And there are scenario six. You can see that there this reflect country specificity because China um, or you they do not cover overlap with each other. And for example, the remanufacturing of automotive parts and and for China. Um, by reusing the parts of automotives, you avoid producing the new parts, which uh, which uh, obviously is one method to reduce GHG emission. But in European Union, um, it's not included in the taxonomy. So you can see from here that um, the common ground, the 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 activity that is not covered. Uh, it's not overlap uh, between the China and EU. It does not mean uh, that they are not green. It's just a reflect country specificity or economic specificity of the economy. So the, the treatment of technical criteria and the conditionality. Um, so we decided to we focus on the substantial contribution technical criteria um, because first we think that based on the description on the EU website, the purpose of the EU sustainable finance system is to mobilize finance for sustainable growth. The aiming at supporting the delivery and on the objective of the European Green Deal by channeling private investment into the transition to climate neutral, climate resilient, resource efficient, just economy. And in China, based on the guideline for establishing the green financial systems, the main purpose is to mobilize and incentivize more social private capital investing in green industries. Um, also um, for technology progress in terms of protection and new energy source, energy saving and other fields. So this description, um, you can see that it, uh, it emphasizes the contribution in the first beginning. And we decided to park. So the next focus of the contribution, the factor that uniquely specified in the taxonomies and also specify and support the main environmental objectives. We decided we, we currently park the do no significant harm and park the minimal safeguard. It's not because that the China taxonomy does not include them. However, it is traded differently, and it's past this risk of do no second harm has been traded in China by referring to its environmental, um, social, um, and safety, um, and, and, and health policy or regulations. So um, we think that this can be treated um, by the environmental risk management process and social risk management process of the financial institutions or the C, um, a corporate responsibility process of corporations. So there are learnings from the taxonomy alignment. So there are some innovative activities that are new or immature and cannot easily be mapped to ISIC, such as hydrogen storage and distribution, and these activities could be described uh, separately in the common ground taxonomy, and you can see it in the X section. Um, section. And there are merits of both the EU method, a new te use technology neutral approach and China's whitelist approach. So while the former one can cover broader divisions, the latter can jump out of the box by directly listing those innovative technologies. And the common ground taxonomy is an important to use to align cross-border capital flows. Regional or country standard of threshold setting should take into consideration country capacity, country capability, and specificity. So inner complementarity. So we, you notice that we have the scenario five and the scenario six. It does not mean that activity um, that we, ana we analyze for uh, five or six, they're not good or not green. So actually, from our point of view, and we think it's it's 
um, somehow reflects the intercomplementarity of the economic activities between the EU and China. So some technical insights about usability. Um, about the scenario description that um, we think, you know, um, when I first designed this template, I think if we provide information on the overlap scenario, we provide transparency on uh, about our mapping process. But then after it, the document is published, people came to me and asked me, um, you know, they, they asked if there any difference, uh, the, uh, the, the, if they should trade the um, activity um, from a different scenario differently. And I uh, let me clarify that the purpose we provide additional notes and if we provide the overlap scenario is for transparency. And they want people to know that um, because in the China, if you go to the, if, if there are experts, you say, okay, taking the afforestation as example, due to language differences and preferences, you can find the afforestation in the EU taxonomy, but in the China's taxonomy, you cannot find exactly the same name due to the language um, issues. So here we listed additional notes here and we let you know that the EU based on which scenario we scream out or find out, identify this overlap. And, and also the um, scenario description facilitate asset selection uh, that will be refinanced. And just now Dr. Ma said, uh, discussed about the ABS products. And, and, and for example, and if for um, uh, financial institutions who wants to select some of the assets from their domestic portfolio and refast it. And based on the additional notes here, you realize that from which kind of asset you have using domestic label, you can potentially find, um, you can potentially label it with the common ground or find those um, assets that is aligned with common ground taxonomy. So this is purpose is to facilitate use. And bond equity investment and, and my suggestion is that uh, we localize the, do no, the Danish and the minimal safeguard. And you can see in the CGT table and their statement, uh, which I wrote, I put down is at the operational level and all items included in this common ground taxonomy are expected to comply with relevant environmental, climate, safety, social and quality regulations reflecting the Danish and the minimal safeguard principle. And using the existing environmental and social risk management system of the financial institutions, and usually involves a due diligence, risk mitigation, and post-investment management process. Some insights into the building activities. Um, Dr. Ma has mentioned that we, um, you know, after uh, November, starting from December last year, we started a, a special group, a subgroup, um, that we focus on the uh, construction of new building activities. So here um, are some information that I want to share is this slide shows, and this is also what we have discussed with the European uh, Union experts is, Actually, starting from 30 years ago, China already has started its building energy saving standard making process and trying to build a comprehensive system to continually improve the energy performance of buildings. Um, so um, this shows you that China took a stepwise approach and, and to improve the energy efficiency of China. And for, um, so when we did the comparison, and we picked up and based on the industry insights or uh, the in, uh, practical experience of the expert, we um, had a head on head comparison on the energy consumption requirement between the EU criteria and China criteria, the air tightness and thermal integrity, and also life cycle uh, GWP analysis. And our conclusion is that um, in some areas, especially for um, mandatory um, GHG emissions per square meter annually, the China had a more stringent requirement than European Union. However, and for the disclosure of the life cycle GWPs, for well, China is mandatory, um, but um, is 
it's not being used as a threshold. So if you dis you just disclose it in Europe and in China, but it does not set a threshold. Or if you exceed some uh, you know level and you cannot issue the green bonds like such like that. So that's the reason why uh, we ascribe scenario four and uh, for the construction of new buildings. And we have very limited time, so I actually have to group some of my points into one slide. So some of my own takeaways from the Common Ground Taxonomy Org is about technical criteria prevalence and convergence. And let me, uh, and data process and applying on complex development projects and the use of the AI technologies. I want to especially emphasize that I have, so, I have written, I have tried to write a protocol and, 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 and trying to streamline the process, how we did the comparison and mapping. And I hope, I think that for taxonomies and in order for it to be, to be widely used and highly usable, and we in the future, and, and you have to streamline the data process to verify um, it's, uh, it complies with the technical screening criteria, and for the language using taxonomy, it's better be standardized, standardized and machine readable. And also um, currently there are also systemic reporting and also ESC disclosure standards they are being made and in the process of internet of global convergence. So um, the data generated should be generated from a qualified management system. I think there should be some synergies between the reporting data and the taxonomy criteria so that it will lower the cost and, and lower the barrier of implementation. Inspiration for jurisdictions and financial institutions. Um, so Dr. Ma mentioned that um, um, the purpose, uh, one of the main purpose of to have a green taxonomy is to avoid greenwashing and prevent greenwashing. And here are two famous cases that happened recently. I believe the most of the audience have heard about. Um, it shows you that without a systematic or a thorough understanding of the green finance standards and how to use green taxonomy, and you, your organization and your career is at risk. So um, there are some advice, I have advices on the sectors that people ask, how about uh, sectors and activities that are not covered? Because currently we only have sufficient time to cover the six sections and some uh, major activities. And here I shows you um, you can, if you look at the left hand side, we mapped uh, the China's activity and the China project taxonomy and EU taxonomy and try to um, uh, have some statistical overview of the coverage of derivation across all the macro sections that is in the ISEC. And obviously that there it has some policy indications that there are for those sectors that are not covered, we need to consider you know, in the future and, 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 and to add it in the taxonomy. And for some of the activities and we, uh, that we were not able to make conclusion in the first phase, we will try to spend more energy on that. There are some, I noticed that uh, there are some market-based approach that suggested, for example, they're not centered around taxonomies. Um, some, there, there are three types of market-based approaches, at least to here, first is principle-based. They rely on user's judgment on impact indicators setting and reporting. The impact could be positive or negative. And the second method is ESG scoring. And third one is negative or positive screening tools. The potential risk there is if you rely on users and who do not fully understand the risk profiling or who do, do not want to disclose the full risk profiling of the project. And the investors, they have the information in symmetry. And the question, I list a question here, a clothing retail company claiming green supply chain policy and however bury or burn unsold stock to maintain the market price, can it issue a green bond? So this is a question, I think, open question for the audience and to think about. And my suggestion is to try 
to use a pre um, taxonomy, I call it pre taxonomy test here is so whatever voluntary approach principle impact matrices you want to use. So honestly, what is the likelihood for the financed activity project be incorporated into either EU or China taxonomy in the future. So being aware or understanding the approach of the EU taxonomy development and China taxonomy development, currently in mainland market of China, there are industry associations, um, not financial, um, the real industry associations that they are doing this research and they're trying to understand how to align um, what's the possibility to incorporate um, their green activities uh, or standardize their green activities so that in the future they could be incorporated into the taxonomy. And there are suggestions on adopting the common ground taxonomy by the Hong Kong SAR. So last year, um, and when the first version of common ground taxonomy was published, um, the Hong Kong Monetary um, Authority Chief Executive claimed that Hong Kong will adopt the Common Ground Taxonomy to classify which economic activities are considered environmentally sustainable. And, and my suggestion is, first of all, um, use the knowledge of IPS Taxonomy Group, because Hong Kong is a member of IPSF, so they have access to all the, um, doc the documents and materials that we shared for every working group meeting, uh, but not in the, for the technical meeting. Um, use the knowledge of IPS of taxonomy group to support formulation of a highly usable green finance taxonomy based on the common ground taxonomy that incorporates the merits of both the EU and China taxonomies and be explicit about contextual standards and measurable performance indicators and consider data process from the beginning in the first phase, link taxonomy to financial product qualification by not reporting legislation. And lastly, invite capable members from professional organizations, for example, from Hong Kong GAR, Green Finance uh, Association, or ICMA, or ISO to join the drafting team. So um, I noticed that our time is, the, the time is to the end. So I just want to share that here's a background logic for China's taxonomy that well, you have a green financial system and you have a green industrial standards, they should coordinate with each other so that to, so to enhance usability um, in the future. And also uh, why should be explicit about the contextual standards. And here an example, um, here is an example when we try to compare the hydropower project. So China, you can see it's called, uh, you need to name constructing and operation of large scale hydropower facilities. And you'll notice that it says you can, it should be project listed in the National Renewable Energy Program and other related programs. If you are international investors, when you read this sentence, you will feel confused. Do we have many questions? What does it mean? There, it's, there are unspoken contexts because for China or hydrogen, hydropower station, they make use of canyon terrain and protection. And also in China, um, because of the arable land is so precious, well, it's, it, you won't get the permit if the, if, if the construction of hydropower station, they flood a large area. And on the right-hand side, it's the EU taxonomy description, which produced the common ground taxonomy. So I want to end here and, and see if there are questions that I can answer. Thank you. Oh, great, thank you so much, Dr. Wan. But in the interest of time, because um, we realize it's up to five o'clock and we do have the report launch from uh, Chowning. So um, we will save the Q&A if people can just um, send those to me directly and we'll pass them on to you. So thank you so much, um, Chowning. Please, um, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Jenny. Uh, thank you uh, to, uh, to Dr. Ma and Dr. Wang as well. Uh, for giving us really comprehensive background of the common ground taxonomy. Uh, I think in the interest of time, I probably would skip some of the content, but I do want to highlight a few areas. Uh, can we go to page one, please? Slide one. Great. So, um, so to further integrate sustainable finance um, within Greater Bay, uh, the common ground taxonomy and product alignment working group has been uh, set up in the beginning of the year uh, to, as one of the key focus for uh, GBA, GFA uh, in 2022. 
So the working group is co-chaired by Hong Kong Green Finance Association and Guangdong Green Finance uh, Committee. And there are about 20 members from GFA and, and three other representatives from uh, GBA uh, to, uh, to form the working group. And so it was actually really well represented in terms of uh, the, the type of institutions within the working group. So we're talking about banks, investors, ESG service providers, academics, NGOs, industry bodies, and, po uh, and policy makers. So the working group uh, is taking a, a face approach uh, to address three critical questions. Um, uh, when it comes to common ground taxonomy uh, adop adoption uh, in sustainable finance policies and, and market development. So question one, which is the phase one report that we're launching today, is basically trying to answer the question of what opportunities the CG CGT basic taxonomy present for Hong Kong and GBA. For phase two is really focusing on the usability of the common ground taxonomy or common ground taxonomy based taxonomy for Hong Kong. And phase three is really trying to shape uh, what the taxonomy may look like for Hong Kong um, um, uh, in a much uh, in late, later this year. So we're launching phase one today and phase two will be launched uh, during our annual forum uh, in end September. So please stay tuned. Um, so if we go to the next day, um, so for observation and challenge, I think I won't reiterate much because that actually has been addressed by Dr. Ma and Dr. Bualu and really coincide with, you know, some of the uh, international view when it comes to common ground taxonomy uh, adop uh, adoption. Uh, generally speaking, Hong Kong really welcome a more standardization uh, in terms of taxonomy for the market to develop, to grow. And the CGT-based approach is something that we'll expect to support the facilitation of cross-border uh, capital flow uh, between mainland and Hong Kong, as well as you know, regionally and globally. And given that the, a lot of the financial institutions in Hong Kong are already very familiar with both the China or EU taxonomies. So onboarding the use of a, a CGT-based taxonomy in Hong Kong will be fairly straightforward. So these are the consensus that we got out of the survey that we, we, we conducted in the beginning of the year. However, it does come with some of the challenges highlighted by uh, the cross -bond, uh, respondents in the survey. So these are the questions that we we, we, we got a lot when we were talking to uh, uh, the, the, the respondents. For instance, what's the legal status of a CGT-based taxonomy for Hong Kong? What this will look like once this rolled out? And how do you extend the taxonomy uh, beyond debt financing to equity, for example? And how can you make sure the taxonomy, which will be developed uh, in Hong Kong, uh, is internationally recognized? And finally, is the, the, the issue when it comes to do no significant harm and minimum safeguard, right? That was also a question that I already flagged to Dr. Ma uh, earlier. So these are the key challenges or questions that raised during the, the interview process. And we want to really highlight this uh, to the audience, particularly when we have policymakers in the mix. So based on the feedbacks collected from the cross uh, respondents and our research, we are proposing a series of guiding principles to help shape the adoption of a credible and operational uh, CGT-based taxonomy that would really support uh, finance and investment um, to aid the transition towards a low carbon economy. There's no debate uh, among the uh, uh, respondents that the taxonomy, uh, how whatever it's going to look like in the future, needs to be science-based and Paris aligned. Climate needs to put to be to be put first uh, uh, with, as a key objective when designing uh, a Hong Kong uh, taxonomy green classification tool. Secondly, is uh, and thirdly is regarding interoperability, which also talked about heavily uh, by Dr. Ma and Dr. Wang uh, Bolu, right? But what I wanted to highlight here is that the interoperability is not only uh, referring to the scope of activities as classified by the ISAC code, right? This is a number one first step, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, interoperability. 
However, we would actually ask for a step further is the interoperability of matrix. So what we mean is that uh, we need to, we, we, the market sees the benefit of interoperable matrix and criteria for defining substantial contributions and significant harm towards climate change mitigation, for example. Uh, for, ex for instance, if you think about an economic activity like power generation, right? Power generation itself is an ISAC code that you can identify across different jurisdictions and you can map that accordingly. However, we need to look into the matrix defined power generation. So for example, um, uh, 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 per kilowatt hours of uh, greenhouse gas emission uh, emitted when it comes to transportation per kilometers of CO2 equivalent generated. So these are the matrix that we are talking about in, def in, de in ensuring interoperability of taxonomy uh, uh, to, be, to be operational. Uh, however, I also want to emphasize that by defining interoperable matrix and criteria, we are not necessarily saying that the, 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 the threshold needs to be identi identical across different jurisdictions, right? So that's something that really worth putting in, into perspective. And finally, is put transition as part of the future taxonomy development. Uh, looking at the current CGT, there is substantial uh, output that we can use, particularly when it comes to the significantly overlap portion between EU and China uh, classification of green activities. What we are proposing as a working group is that transition needs to be part of the radar in defining what are the activities are classified or can be defined as credible transition. So that's something that we all need to think about heavily. And there's certainly that need uh, for this kind of clarity. So to help to operationalize a CGT-based um, uh, taxonomy for Hong Kong, we chart a path forward. Uh, first of all, uh, we ask for clarification about uh, the regulatory status of a CGT-based taxonomy in Hong Kong and how it will relate to sustainable finance regulations in mainland China, in the European Union, and elsewhere. Uh, don't forget, Hong Kong is a very international market, so we need to make sure it makes sense once the taxonomy is developed. Secondly, we recommend policymakers continue to leverage global development um, on sustainable sustainability disclosure to ensure that corporate and financial institutions operate in a data ecosystem that e efficiently provides actionable and relevant climate and sustainability related information. Uh, furthermore, we recommend deeper engagement in the global discussion uh, on taxonomies through platforms such IPSF uh, to share Hong Kong's experience adopting a CGT-based uh, taxonomy with other markets. And finally, we find that in order to ensure credible uh, and prevent cred credibility and prevent greenwashing um, in the market, policymakers can explore potential implementation of mandatory third-party verification or portfolio review uh, to ensure there's credibility and robustness in the making of a taxonomy. So finally, um, I want to thank uh, the working group team who put this report together. So the report is available on Hong Kong JFA website for you to download. And, uh, and I want to acknowledge uh, the authors from Hong Kong UST, uh, the reviewers from uh, HKGFA and the working group members uh, uh, to make your time uh, um, for, for this project. So this is only phase one where we really just collected some of the market views and reflect uh, and reflection uh, uh, as, a, as a teaser. Uh, the next phase, as I mentioned, is really looking at the usability uh, across uh, fin debt financing, investment strategy, disclosure for investors and corporate and policy application, right? So please stay tuned uh, with us. And, 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 and throughout the process, we also uh, take advantage of the opportunity to engage with policy makers so that 
um, with the, using the platform, we can really work together to, to move forward a CGT-based uh, taxonomy in Hong Kong and GBA. So I'll just pause here to see if you have any questions. Thank you. Okay, uh, Channing, I guess um, just in the interest of time, we do have a couple of questions. Um, the For the Hong Kong taxonomy, is climate data collection expected to be done in accordance with TCFD recommendations and corporate reports? Uh, well, the taxonomy uh, is in the making of policymakers, so we can only provide our recommendation or suggestion or thinking, right? Uh, based on the, cross, uh, the respondents from the survey, uh, it's imperative that climate uh, alignment, uh, particularly alignment to the Paris Agreement, needs to be at the core of the taxonomy making. Therefore, when it comes to climate data collection, I think it, it's sensible to look at framework that has been well recognized internationally and with, with Paris Accord in, in, in the mind. So TCFD is one of the very best practice to, to follow. Uh, and it's very standardized in terms of uh, framing, you know, the questions from uh, from risk management to strategy to actual data performance, so on and so forth. So that's a good practice, certainly that we can reflect. And and I think that's a, also something that um, we also concluded, you know, in the phase one report when it comes to the data challenge, uh, as well as the need uh, in terms of uh, science based and Paris aligned. Right. Um and then in terms of, um, I guess this is more technical question, um, and maybe Dr. Wang is um, in the process of answering a lot of these questions online. Um, what the question is, data process such should be generated from a qualified management system, you mean such as ISO? Uh, well, not necessarily. Uh, you mentioned, it's interesting you mentioned about TCFD. I'm also, um, I joined a discussion with the China SEC on how to, because um, China is uh, developing its uh, standards on uh, environmental impact information disclosure for the banks, financial institutions, and also um, the, the security uh, commission um, is, is trying to um, provide inputs to the ISSB, that is TCFD aligned reporting standards. We'll see that um, for the domestic market, they will see converging in with the reporting standard in the future. What I meant is for whatever data is required uh, you know, by the, either the taxonomy or identifying green projects, you needed to find synergies you know, in your management system to ensure the quality of data. They could generate it from, they should generate from either your EHSS management process or say it's, or say, uh, a corporate responsibility process. You, 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 or you have some other systems, for example, environmental and social ma risk management system, and which are certified. The quality of the management system provide the risk mitigation for senior managers. So it does not have to be ISO. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I, look, I think that's um, all we have time for. We've overrun by 15 minutes, but it was an extremely useful, a very comprehensive um, and detailed discussion on CGT. We look forward to seeing uh, phase two of the, uh, the research report um, at the annual forum in September, Chani. Dr. Wang, thank you so much for answering all those questions. I'm sure there'll be plenty more um, to come um, after this uh, conference or this webinar. And, um, and thank you to our participants as well for joining us today. Thank you so much.